What is going on, CyberFam? We're back at it with another one of these review videos. Uh, this time, I'm going to take a look at Meta Constellation. Now, before I get started, I just want to give a huge thank you to all of you guys viewing this video and all my subscribers out there. I really, really appreciate you guys voting with the subscribe button. We're at like 1.2K subscribers, which like I would never ever think this was possible. So honestly, thank you so much for you know chiming in and spending your time with me. Anyway, uh, let's try to get right to the point. The video is actually just like three minutes long. It'll go through whatever it's going through uh, and I'm going to chime in. Now, there's a few things that I'm looking for here. The thing I'm keen on here is the Edge AI integration as well as the implications of the entire mesh working together. Palantir for me is multiple platforms, right? It's a, I think it's a platform company and that all sounds great. But the thing is, the important part here isn't what they offer, but it's how easily they integrate with each other. Is, is really the point I'm trying to make, right? So you can offer like six, seven different things, but if the integrations between those things are not good, then, you know, you got problems. And I'm really excited about this Edge AI stuff, right? Because the thing is, everyone has machine learning of some sort, guys, okay? We're, we're, we're past the point where people are wondering about machine learning. It's quite literally already here, and it's, it's running in a lot of major companies. No one's really doing much with it. Everyone's just kind of dabbling and trying stuff here and there, and that's fine, nothing wrong with that. But Palantir is the type of company who is trying to get ahead of the curve here. And basically Edge AI, from what I'm looking at, is I'm looking to see, okay, based on all these models that they're running, how narrow of a use case can they get out of Edge AI? And wherever it's running, how effective is it? How efficient is it? That kind of stuff is what I'm looking for. Because when they can pull out this kind of result-based actionable tasks and actually execute on something, that's the entire process altogether. Then if you have that, all you have to do is really just improve on that and you know tweak it and stuff like that. So uh, anyway, it's just a personal thing that I'm looking for with the company. That's one of the reasons why I really love Palantir. Palantir's Meta Constellation software harnesses the power of growing satellite constellations, deploying AI yep. into space to provide insights to decision makers here on Earth. Our Meta Constellation integrates with existing satellites, optimizing hundreds of orbital sensors and AI models and allowing users to ask time-sensitive questions across the entire planet. Okay. Important questions. Yeah. Like, where are there indicators of wildfires? Or, oh. how are climate changes affecting crop productivity? Honestly, the wildfire thing is such a crazy, crazy thing that's happening, right? There's been a few bad ones in Canada. There's obviously a few bad ones in, in California and that sort. Colorado's got some issues with, with, with um, just climate-related stuff. Everything aside, I, I think that this whole climate change stuff is obviously here to stay. I think it's time to stop blaming people in the past and all this other stuff, because to be honest, what are they really going to do? Like, you're not going to change these old people, right? They're, they're just going to continue thinking the way they think. And it is really up to us, like our generation and the future generations to solve this problem. And instead of blaming people, I really just want to get down to business and do what I can to solve. Like, I know myself, I do as much as I can, like, you know, recycle, composting and all, this, all sorts of other stuff. We, you know, we try to buy as ethically as possible. It's tough to do that, of course, right? But, you know, we, we do what we can. I think this generation is, is really indicative of trying to do that. So I'm really excited for the future. I think we are on the right track. Um, but anyway, I, I just wanted to touch on that. That that This and things like trafficking and stuff are a huge point for me. If we can solve these things in the future, it is honestly such a huge moment in human history. So call me an optimist, but I'm hoping for it. And when and where are naval fleets conducting operations? Oh man, Meta I love the military pushes side. Palantir's Edge AI technology to a new frontier. As we all know, submarines present threats to the US and its allies. Mm -hmm. And to protect strategic interests, allied forces need to track every submarine's deployment around the world. Tell them, and girl. At the forefront of this challenge are anti submarine warfare officers. They turn to Meta Constellation oh. to monitor ports across the Pacific. Oh, look at that. That's. Uh... Yeah, see, Meta Constellation is its own install base that they go and install somewhere. But I can see that too, though. I can see that. I think um, it could be its own product. And then um, they just obviously leverage a lot of things from Gotham. It seems like the, the integrations and stuff are very similar to that offering there. Let me show you a little bit about what that looks like. In response to allied monitoring requests, Meta Constellation dynamically determines which orbiting sensors are available. Integrated through Palantir, the constellations then collaboratively schedule coverage over each port. Okay. Meanwhile, Apollo for Edge AI assigns tailored AI micro models to each satellite. Running on board the satellite, the models will automatically oh, find submarines and stream those insights directly to users. With the mission planned, 
Apollo automatically reconfigures each of the satellites, pushing the right micromodels into orbit. Okay. And as a software payload on board, Palantir's Edge AI on, platform connects complex... Let's run that With part mission again. planned, Apollo automatically reconfigures each of the satellites, pushing the right micromodels into orbit. Micromodels. And as a software payload on board, Palantir's Edge AI platform connects complex satellite subsystems to models integrating new AI with the hardware. The best created through Palantir, the constellations then collaboratively schedule coverage over each port. Meanwhile, Apollo for Edge AI assigns tailored AI micromodels to each satellite. Running on board the satellite, the models will automatically find submarines and stream those insights directly to users. Okay. With the mission planned, Apollo automatically reconfigures each of the satellites, pushing the right micromodels into orbit. And as a software payload on board, Palantir's Edge AI platform connects complex satellite subsystems to models integrating new AI with the hardware. The best part, my favorite part, is that as it orbits, the Edge AI platform hot swaps the right micro models in, rapidly reconfiguring the satellite. Mm, the models okay. process imagery, they detect submarines, geolocate them, and then determine any movement since the last collection passed, all in under a second. When the AI sees a submarine movement, that oh, insight is directly downlinked to Allied forces as the satellite passes overhead, and the anti submarine warfare officers are notified in just minutes, empowering them to respond in a way that we've never seen before. As you can tell, we're really excited about Palantir's Meta Constellation <laughs> and see it as the software that brings hundreds of satellites to bear on your hardest problems. Whether it's the anti-submarine warfare officer that I just described using it to find submarines or first responders leveraging AI to spot wildfire signs, Meta Constellation is there to empower users. That is awesome, man. Okay, so there's not too much to take in there, but it does show you that there's a decent level of integration between the install bases and the actual sort of edge devices that would actually do the functioning or do the task that is supposed to happen at the final step of the process, right? The coolest part about Palantir software, right, is really that within the whole ecosystem of like the operating stack, right, there isn't just the software do you know what i mean a lot of SaaS companies and stuff really the integration that they have within this system is with other softwares or with other subsystems and blah 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 blah. i mean like it's just really cool to know that they, they do this kind of stuff right like i mean they're literally talking to satellites it was like awesome for this to continue to be connected right the way that all the satellites beam back and you have all the location all this stuff right I used to work in the iot space and i used to work with this company that actually uh, relayed like satellite information down from devices or from like trucks and stuff, right? It's actually quite a high velocity process. So, you know, I don't know, I don't know what kind of sensors they're using, of course, but um, like the, you have to have some crazy latency and like it, there's a lot of technical issues with this before it even gets to your website platform or whatever desktop platform. That in itself is its own battle. I know that when I was working in that space, there was a lot of messages that were getting lost, right? So there was like a, a mainly the, the protocol of all TCP UDP and, and we're trying to get mostly UDP just because it's one way and it's faster. But anyway, regardless, there was a lot of messages that were lost. So when we'd see the logs, we'd find points in time where we'd actually lose some of the data. Part of that was because of the sensors, part of that was because of our own processing, but you know, there's this quirks here, right? So. It's, it's really interesting that Pounder is able to do it in such a precise way. Of course, I haven't used the product. We don't know, but just from the sense of it, from the demo itself, you got to believe that this is, uh, they're basing it on like existing logs or mock logs, which are based on production logs usually, right? They're modeled off of it. Um, so it's, it's just really interesting to me that they're able to get this done. On top of that, when you actually go and action these tasks, right? Look, so when you, when you get your results and you action the task, these all go through some form of API or another. So there's another middle tier altogether that goes and does the business logic and actually sends and relays the information back and forth between, you know, your edge devices and your control command unit. So many different things that go into this as factors well you see the actual like you know command unit and all this stuff and then you click a button and boom the satellite does something it sound it feels like magic in a lot of ways it might be <laughs> but the thing that i was looking for here i got these satellites actually operate solely based on micro models and what that really is right just to simplify it a little bit is just 
you train a model locally. So you have your own device or your servers or whatever the case is, right? You're training these models locally. So in this case, we're talking about image recognition, right? Once it's trained, the model will say, okay, to this level of accuracy, we were we are able to predict this in the water being a submarine, right? But after the training is finished, once the model is done, you can export that. And basically the trained model is, the algorithm is trained to predict something in a, in a certain fashion. Once they upload these micro models into, you know, the satellites, they use like the very like edgy use case of the satellite type of hardware to then perform these actions. You guys have to understand like this thing isn't like freaking space. So it's limited to the resources that it has. And you know, it's a very, that's why they call it the edge. Once they're up in these edge devices, they're not like these big rack mount servers or uh, some kind of large appliance with large power source and all this other stuff like unlimited power. These are edge units that have very limited power, you know, especially in a satellite, you know, if it breaks, you can't just send somebody up. You can't send the repair guy up there to go and fix it, right? Like you need a ladder of a lifetime to get there. So, you know, it's, it's a matter of efficiency here. So they're able to train these models and deploy it to the satellite. And it actually performs in such a manner that it's able to pull out what the operator needs right to a certain to a certain degree of accuracy um, and that i think is where the tweaking happens like and on top of the actual micro model that goes up there the system so you know meta constellation or or they were saying apollo builds some of the models there right depending on what the situation that the operator is seeing um do this model instead of this one right and then it, then it goes and uploads that to the edge as well there, there's a there's a conversation happening here behind the scenes that we are just not appreciating here right now the reality is we don't actually know fully, but just from the demos itself, you can, from a technical perspective, you can see the layers of complexity and that's what makes me a little excited. Like I would really like to get more on this edge AI stuff. I did another video on it or I'll put a card up here. Lastly, I want to leave you guys with this video. I use her on Twitter by the handle uh, Roy9902125. Posted a tweet with this um, video here. Basically like NBC did this thing with uh, this thing called Lattice. Uh, that the military is using to kind of knock drones out of the sky, which is really cool. But, um, you know, I'll, I'll leave the video in the description. Go check it out. But here's a small clip. This is Lattice. Powered by artificial intelligence, it detects possible incoming threats from miles away, immediately gathering and processing information from a network of radars, cameras, That's Gotham. and radio frequencies. That was Gotham. And or one of these pseudo Gothams. Systems, identifying exactly what the threat is in real time. This might be hard for the human eye to distinguish that this is a drone. It's actually relatively straightforward to a computer. Lattice can determine whether something is a possible threat and launch a modified racing drone to get a closer look all on its own. In this <laughs> demonstration, the white drone is the enemy and the black drone is the interceptor. The interceptor drone, it's launched, it's locked onto the suspicious vehicle, and now it's saying, to the user, this is suspicious. Do you want me to take out this incoming threat? That's right. And with just take one button, out. the user can now give the uh, interceptor the command clear to attack. Now the interceptor is going to accelerate into the target from beneath. Take uh, the bloody target. shot. The incoming threat is down. That's right. From the Bond movie. The system. Well, we got to remember, the point of all this stuff, right, is the fact that you want to let these automated systems take care of a lot of the things for you you don't want someone to be in the process for every step of the way it's not exactly taking everyone's job away it's making certain jobs a lot faster and easier if anything it's actually creating jobs because you'll have more inferences to take from these things right so in this case in this, in this drone case these drones are actually going out and and knocking over stuff and you're not actually doing much of the interaction here like why wouldn't you want that it's a safety hazard right like the, this whole situation is supposed to just be automated to an extent where you're you as an operator or you as uh, some kind of some form of a human in the system are really just there to give some sort of approval or verify and double check and that kind of stuff right so you're pretty important actually you're one of the most important parts of this whole system but the main bulk of the work is done by an automated task and action we'll see guys i mean um the biggest thing is in the system there's like a ton of moving parts so really time is going to be able to tell us whether it's as efficient and as uh, fast and as good as it needs to be to be able to compete and provide what they say it's going to provide so let's see anyway there you have it videos in the description below that's all i got guys uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.